Hello everyone, my name is Louisa Lontang. I just attended the uh, public open house today, May 17th at um, 110 Manitou regarding Hidden Valley. What I've observed uh, this evening has been quite disturbing. Uh, there is the known habitat of Jefferson salamander and Jefferson salamander hybrids in Hidden Valley. The buffer zone only extends 300 meters around some of the water features in this area. Uh, it is not inclusive of all known wetland areas. Area residents have raised concerns that the mapping doesn't truly reflect the dimensions of the wetlands in this area, and I have a video I'll show of that. Um, there has also been a conf confirmation that the um, region intends to utilize Section 17 of the Endangered Species Act in order to allow the destruction of uh, specimens and habitat uh, the possible removal or damage to Jefferson salamanders in this area. Across the region of Waterloo right now, uh, there are similar concerns occurring. There is currently an Environmental Bill of Rights request uh, involving a subdivision proposal in Dune South uh, near um, Stauffer, Stauffer Drive. Um, it is uh, EBR number 011-3. 444 and that is a permit from a housing company called LVH Developments. They are currently seeking a permit to allow the destruction of Jefferson salamanders. Again, it is using um, the Environmental Protection Act Clause 17 to C. Um, in regards to the West Side Lands in Waterloo, we have similar concerns that uh, rare species are not being adequately protected. I attended an OMB process in May of uh, 2010 that secured mandatory bird studies to be done in environmentally sensitive protected area 19. Um, before uh, land augmentation uh, took place, it would seem reasonable to secure that data to prevent uh, uh, driving off rare species during the time of the testing. However, in the Owen property, there was permitted tree removal that took place adjacent to ESPA 19 which resulted in the removal of 60-year-old old-growth uh, coniferous trees, which would have made a suitable habitat for the Acadian flycatchers that have been identified in this area uh, during the previous EIS studies. There has also been extensive grading and land augmentation as permitted by the City of Waterloo that has taken place on the Vista Hills property and the Grayer Vale property prior to securing OMB-mandated studies uh, involving the land bird monitoring and involving uh, OMB mandated creek studies on Clare Creek. I went to the Ontario Municipal Board to secure uh, hydrological assessments for Clare Creek. It resulted in mandatory piezometers to be installed in the creek to determine the flow and flow rates getting into this creek system. Before those tests were done, the City of Waterloo and the Grand River Conservation Authority authorized the removal of water on site. And this resulted in uh, water volume losses uh, heading towards Clare Creek. There's been significant land augmentations that have taken place. I have requested the data regarding the creek monitoring and all I received was the fact that the monitoring devices were installed in October. Uh, this is almost a full two months after they had begun to dewater the creek area. So uh, I haven't received any data yet. It is currently May the 17th, 2011, and I'm still waiting to uh, secure the data from last year's monitoring. And I'm still waiting to secure the data regarding the OMB mandated land bird monitoring as well. So it is my fear that the region is knowingly allowing the augmentation of habitat prior to securing the uh, critical habitat delineations in order to protect these creatures appropriately. And this, in my view, represents a failure of process on the part of both the city and the MNR. It is my understanding that the MNR has been previously sued in regards to issues like this. Uh, what cases that come to mind include the Nooksack Dace in BC, as well as the Greater Sage Grouse in Alberta. Um, it seems that in Ontario, it's a chronic issue that we are allowing approval processes to take place without reasonably delineating uh, the habitats and uh, determining what the risks and the associated costs are prior to our planning approval processes. And it would appear to me that this is a violation of Section 2.1.6 of the uh, Provincial Policy Statement 
as well as the Species at Risk Act, as well as the Ontario Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act, as well as the Endangered Species Act 2007. In regards to the uh, securing of permits to destroy specimens, this tactic has been used, uh, is currently being used for Dune South, is currently being used for Hidden Valley, and has recently been used in regards to the Hamlin Creek proposal in Guelph. This is becoming a common situation where uh, developers uh, are looking for a way to circumvent doing the proper studies to assess risk. They merely secure the permit to kill the species without doing diligence to gather the data to mitigate that risk. And I personally find that repulsive. I think it breaks the spirit and the intent of the law as designed. Uh, it is not showing good faith uh, to the efforts of the many people who have crafted these legislations over the years. It is not serving to, to adequately protect these species and we really need to start cracking down on these bad proposals. It is very clear that the provincial policy statement states that uh, development is prohibited in the habitat of threatened and endangered species and we need a reasonable means to secure enforcement to assure that this is done. Because currently, if even if conditions of the OMB are not met, it's up to concerned citizens like me to have to pay out of pocket to secure um, issues of non-compliance in a court of law. And that's an unreasonable expectation to put on the, the public. It cost me $27,000 to secure my ruling at a great sacrifice to my family. It was uh, a situation of great duress for a lot of, the, a lot of this. We were um, met with threat of costs and uh, I, I can't even explain what it was like to watch the augmentation of properties before the data was secured. It's obscene in my view that this could be allowed. It is not serving uh, the interests of the Canadian public or uh, Canada at large. We can't possibly meet our uh, expectations to preserve biodiversity if these kind of shenanigans are taking place. And so I'm working towards establishing policy to secure a reasonable means that we can apply these legislations, a reasonable sequence of events so that these tests are done prior to the augmentation of properties. It's that simple. That's what we need to secure right now. Thank you kindly for your time.